Well, good evening and welcome to Coffs Harbour Bible Church Wednesday Bible study time. A little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, please remember that this is the last week of daylight saving in Australia. So um, please remember to wind your clock back one hour this coming Saturday night because Sunday uh, we are all c continuing on with our online uh, meetings, 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 6 p.m. Sunday evening. Now, of course, if you're in Queensland, uh, you don't need to do anything. But for the rest of the uh, eastern states and uh, South Australia, you need to wind your clocks back one hour, which gives you one extra hour on Saturday night. Now, something else. Down... Here on your screen somewhere you'll see a like button. Now can I ask that you, uh, if you like this video and these videos, can you please hit the like button? And you also may like to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any new videos coming on. That's uh, coming up. That would be really good if you could do that. If you could hit the like button and hit the little subscribe button, that would be really good. Well, thank you for joining in from wherever you are. Uh, I assume most of um, most of the people that are looking at this video are in Australia, but who knows? It could be any part of the world. So good evening. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, good morning, or wherever else you may be. Now, I'd like us to take our Bibles, please. And if you can turn to one of the, the most well-known passages in the Bible, Psalm 23. Psalm 23, please, if you'd get your Bible, uh, you may have a the good old uh, printed copy. You may have an electronic version, but please get your Bible. We're going to read through that psalm in just, just a moment and have a short Bible study. We are living in very strange times indeed. You know, change is not measured in... Uh, weeks and years or months at the moment it's it's measured in days even hours our our lifestyle our country is changing at the moment so rapidly now thankfully we have someone and something that doesn't change now that someone of course is Jesus Christ the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever he is the same he does not change and of course the Bible doesn't change the Bible is God's revealed written word to us and it doesn't change and so we come to this uh, one of this most really popular pieces of literature to put it uh, for want of better words in the history of the earth psalm 23 let's read the psalm together and then we'll pray and then we'll have our bible study the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And would you join with me in prayer? Dear Lord, we thank you um, for your word. We thank you for your presence among us at this time. Lord, we may be scattered, but you are with us and we thank you. We pray that you'll bless us now uh, as we look at your word. Encourage us at this time. Uh, Lord, and maybe there's someone here who, maybe there's a believer who is doing things tough at the moment. We pray that you'll be specially near to them, encourage them from your word. And maybe there's someone here this evening who is not a child of God. I pray that they will see their need and turn to him. Lord, we give you our praise and our worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 23. Before we get to our brief look at the psalm this evening, we need to consider a few things. Um, 
There is the shepherd and there is the sheep, of course. Jesus is our shepherd. In fact, the Bible says that he is the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. And we are his sheep. But a couple of questions need to be answered first before we look at our our little study. First of all, who constitutes God's sheep? Who constitutes God's sheep? Not everyone belongs to God. Not everyone is a Christian. Um, Maybe you've heard this saying, we are all God's children. Or everyone is God's children. Is that true? No, it's not true. Only a certain type of person belongs to God. And that is the person who has accepted God's pardon and forgiveness and grace through faith via the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary. There's no other way to become a child of God. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't work your way to become a child of God. You cannot be born a child of God naturally. You have to actually be born again. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. The promise of God in John 1.12 was very real to me as a youngster. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And 2 Timothy 2.19 says this, The Lord knoweth them that are his. God knows who his sheep are. So, they are the sheep of God. What are sheep really like? Have you ever stopped to think about the characteristics of sheep? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, my surname is Young, and the Young family, uh, we, we come from a long line of sheep farmers. Now, the Young family, I, from, from what I know now, have been out of that industry for quite a few decades now, but for many, many years uh, in the Bathurst area, the Youngs were in um, the sheep industry. I actually, back in the 1990s, I worked uh, for a contract sheep dipper in the Bathurst area, the central tablelands of New South Wales, and did that for a few years, and and, uh, also done a little bit of work as a shed hand, or a a rouseabout, as they used to say, in the shearing shed. And when you work with sheep, you do get a fair bit of time just to observe how sheep live and and what they're like. Here's my list of what sheep are like. <clears throat> you may like to add to this list. Here's my list. Firstly, sheep are easily panicked. It's very easy to panic sheep. You can scatter a mob of sheep very quickly. And in fact, sometimes if you're not if you're not um, if you don't do the right thing with sheep, you can panic those sheep and, and, uh, and they can actually suffocate and die very easily. Uh, it reminds me of the great toilet paper panic of 2020. Uh, hopefully we're getting near to the end of that. Um, I'm not quite sure why people need so much toilet paper. But there was a huge panic about a month ago uh, on, on toilet paper. People are like sheep. They are easily panicked. Here's the second thing. Sheep are not easy to get going. They're just not easy to get going. Um, If you've got to move several thousand sheep, or as I used to do, we used to have to to dip, to plunge dip several thousand sheep, sometimes several thousand a day. Sometimes it's hard to get those sheep going. Uh, And it's been said that a good sheep dog, whether it's a Kelpie, whether it's a, a Border Collie, a good sheep dog is usually worth two or three good farm hands because they can actually get the sheep going. Sheep are not easy to get going. Thirdly, sheep are easily fooled. They are very easily fooled. Now sheep, we often say that sheep are are not very intelligent. Actually, sheep are quite intelligent, but they are fooled. I know uh, we used to um, try and get rid of the foxes in the, uh, especially during lambing season out near Bathurst, but the foxes were very clever. They would, come and sit down and, and uh, they'd be oh, quite a few hundred metres away from the sheep and the sheep would be very wary of the foxes. But over the, as the days went on, the foxes would get closer and closer and closer and then after, after a few days, the sheep would just um, allow 
the fox is very close and of course the foxes are normally not going to attack a full-grown sheep but they're looking for lambs and when they got close enough they would take the lambs so sheep are easily fooled sheep are stubborn sheep are very stubborn uh, i've seen sheep uh, fly into a uh, drop into a, a plunge dip and um, it's quite simple you just get into the dip and the sheep are supposed to walk up the ramp and out but i've seen sheep turn around and try and swim the wrong way and a full-grown weather is a big animal and when you have that sheep full of water they weigh a lot and uh and it wasn't uh, it, it was quite common to see sheep drown because they just would go the wrong way very very stubborn and then sheep are easily led astray uh, as i said before sometimes sheep will just uh, a sheep will uh, a single sheep will make a break for it and then other sheep will follow that and they'll break through fences and get away and so on easily led astray the prophet isaiah said the following very well-known verse all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way all we like sheep have gone astray very very apt uh, description of sheep now remember as we get to our little study and i'm not going to be long this evening i am a sheep and i'm as dumb a sheep as any other sheep uh, but thankfully i have a good shepherd i have a wonderful shepherd in fact the bible says the lord is my shepherd and because god is my shepherd psalm 23 goes on and teaches us what a shepherd is and what a shepherd does and it's a great encouragement uh, for christians to consider these things and by the way everyone needs a shepherd we all need a shepherd uh, that's why that's why god you know i suppose uh, in a way that's why god has given us the local church uh, a flock where we can get together as believers and, and god has given us under shepherds pastors in fact the word pastor means shepherd but even pastors need a shepherd every christian needs a shepherd and the lord is our shepherd now what are some of the characteristics of a shepherd what does a shepherd uh, do well first of all the bible says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want the shepherd is number one my provider he is my provider uh, i shall not want you know i'm sure there are many watching this video right now as we're going through this virus uh, predicament in the world and maybe there's some that are watching this that have lost their jobs they've lost their livelihood uh, and, and 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 you're not sure how you're going to pay the bills next month you're not sure how you're going to feed your family but look if you're a child of god god has your back he's got my back because the lord is my shepherd i shall not want Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God has our backs, folks. We don't need to worry about that. The Lord is our shepherd. We will not want. He is our provider. Secondly, the shepherd is my physiotherapist. Let me read to you here. Verse number two. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he maketh me to lie down in green pastures i want you to notice those two words there lie down because of my uh, my back isn't real good at the moment it's not doing too bad but over the last few months i've had many visits to different physiotherapists now there's one thing common about physiotherapists you go to see the physio and what does he make you do he makes you lie down he makes you lie down every single one of them he says lie down on this couch i'm going to examine your back i'm going to manipulate your back i'm going to massage whatever it might be they want you to lie down the shepherd makes us lie down in green pastures now we can apply this in several different ways um, physically sometimes you need to have a lie down it may seem very simplistic but you know this time of uh, what, what do we call it isolation this time of isolation maybe it's a, a good time for christians to catch up on some sleep it's not a bad idea 
catch up on some sleep. For those of us who, who just work and work and work, and, uh, and that's a very good thing, to work hard and long hours. Um, maybe some of you stuck at home, maybe it's a good time to catch up on some sleep. Rest, in other words, physical rest is very, very good. That's the way God made us. Um, the Lord said to Elijah the prophet one day, he said, Elijah, go down by this particular creek. I want you to go to sleep. I'm going to bring you some food and water. And he did. He slept and he fed him. And then he, and he said, Elijah, go down and sleep again. And I'll bring you some more food and water. He says, because I've got something for you to do. You need to rest up. Many times or, or a number of times in the New Testament, it said that Jesus rested. When the storm was, the disciples were in the boat. Jesus was in the boat, the storm was raging, the disciples were, as they say, freaking out, fearing for the worst. Where was Jesus? He was sound asleep, he was tired. In fact, he said to his disciples on another time, come apart and rest. And so physically, uh, we need to rest. We need to take the principle of, of resting physically. We need to rest mentally. Yeah, that means turning your phone off, um, turn it off or put it on silent and turn off the media and give your mind a rest. Meditate on the things of God, for sure. But give your mind a rest from the thing. that Everything in this world wants the attention of your mind. And sometimes the shepherd says you need to lie down. You need to lie down and have a rest. Physically speaking, metaphorically speaking, mentally speaking, we need to rest. The shepherd is my physiotherapist. And then not only is he my physiotherapist, he's my physician. Look here at verse number three. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. What does it mean he restoreth? Well, if you go to the doctors, what does a doctor do? The doctor helps you restore your health. If you have a health problem, you go to the doctor and at least hopefully... The doctor can help you with restored health. And the physician, our shepherd is the physician, and he restores my soul. Because so often my soul needs restoring. You say, what, is it, what do I need restoring from? Well, uh, sometimes it's sin. It's not always sin, but sometimes it's sin. Sometimes we get worldly. Sometimes we live in the flesh. Sometimes we, uh, we're just not right with God. And, and you and I, you, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're not walking with God. And so we need the shepherd to restore our souls. We need to get right with God. We need to have a time of confession and drawing close to him. And sometimes it's just the cares of life. Sometimes it's the predicaments of life. Uh, uh, and sometimes we just get worn down with life. And, 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 and the shepherd says, I'm here. I will restore your soul. I will restore your soul soul so if someone here you're looking at this video now you need restoration hey you need to go to the shepherd and say lord restore my soul and then not only is the shepherd our physiotherapist and not only is our provider not only is he our physician but he is our pilot verse 3 he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake Verse 2, he leadeth me beside still waters. He's our pilot. He leads us. He doesn't push us. He leads us. Uh, we're in a time of crisis now for many. What should I do? What should I do with my job? What should I do with my business? Uh, we need to acknowledge God. Proverbs 3, 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Acknowledge God during this time one thing is for sure <clears throat> one thing is for sure when he leads us it's in the paths of righteousness God isn't not going to lead us in the path of worldliness God will never lead us in the path of sin God always leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake that means when God leads us he gives us blessing and he guides us to blessing so that we will give him the glory we will glorify his name god will always lead us to do right to do that which is right that which is holy and then verse number four says i will fear no evil for thou art with me i will fear no evil for thou 
art with me. God, the shepherd, is my partner. He's my partner. That's an amazing thing. I, I've always loved Hebrews 13 verse 5. The Bible says, And be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. End of story. God will never, ever, ever, ever leave his own. We said before, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and he will never, ever leave us. He is our partner. He is always with us. Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. What a promise. What a promise. The Lord is on my side. The shepherd is my partner. No matter what you're going through at the moment, if you belong to God, he is with you. If you don't belong to God, then no, he's not. Now, he knows where you are, but that promise is to those who know him. And for those who know him, he will never leave us. The Lord is my pilot. The shepherd is my partner. And then lastly, this evening, the shepherd is my purpose. There's obviously a lot more we could say about this psalm, but we just don't have the time. But verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The shepherd is my purpose. You know, God's sheep have a purpose in life. Our sojourn on planet Earth is not an aimless existence in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We are not a species in the never-ending survival of the fittest. That is not God's sheep. God's goodness and mercy follow us. And you know, the wonderful thing is for the Christian, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Through this life, God is, is our shepherd. God guides us. God provides for us. God restores us. God gives us rest. And God's mercy and goodness follows us. But the best for the Christian is yet to come. So take heart, believer. Times are tough for some. And even for those who are not going through a particularly tough time, times are uncertain. Let not your heart be troubled. We have a wonderful shepherd. What are the applications to this study? Well, let me ask a few questions. <clears throat> a couple of questions, and then I'll be done. Number one, how, how can I best bring glory and honour to God during these, for some, unprecedented times of uncertainty? How can I bring glory and honour to God during these times? Well, we follow the shepherd's leading. Follow his leading. He's the shepherd. He leads us. We must follow him. Secondly, how can I show the love and purpose of God to others through my life? <clears throat> In other words, how, how, can I, how can I make an impact uh, on those that God brings into my life, whether it's online or whether it's where, wherever? Well, this is how we do it. We reflect the shepherd's life. We are supposed to reflect his life. And then how can I draw close to God, even if I'm isolated from everyone else? We are, we are to rest in the shepherd's care. Three encouragements for you, believer. Follow the shepherd's leading, reflect the shepherd's life, and rest in the shepherd's care. We have a wonderful God, and the Lord is my shepherd. Now, please remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, I understand some of you may have your own uh, church um, online facilities for this Sunday. If you don't, please be back here 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning and uh, 6 p.m. Sunday night. God bless you.